This is the EWN Podcast Network. Welcome to Prime Spark, the podcast that brings you conversations that inspire, celebrate, and empower women over 55. The second women's revolution is here, and it is time for us to fuel a spark that will ignite your way forward, illuminate your path, and reflect your gifts in the world. Now, here is your host for Prime Spark, Sarah Hart. Hi, and welcome to Prime Spark. I'm Sarah Hart, and I'm so happy you're here with us. Prime Spark is designed for women over 55 or close, with a goal to help us all live our happiest, most fulfilling, and productive lives now and in the future. The mission of Prime Spark is to change the way our society sees and treats older women. That's a big mission, which only means we all need to be involved and we need to get going now. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Michaela Di Carlo, a woman whose work I greatly admire. Michaela Di Carlo is an experienced bilingual English and Italian journalist, content editor, and copywriter with an MA in communication studies from the University of Rome. As a late bloomers advocate and founder of the digital lifestyle magazine, crunchytales.com, dedicated to late bloomers, she is on a mission to reset the meaning of midlife, delivering quality journalism and focusing her work on inspirational content to empower women feeling stuck in the second act of their life. Speaker and creator of the Crunchy Talks, bi-monthly panel discussions regularly run in the UK as well as in Italy. She explores midlife issues, aging and repurposing in life with a group of professionals from different backgrounds. Her aims are to increase awareness of casual ageism, to challenge stereotypes and old cliches, and to help middle-aged women to rethink the way they approach midlife. Welcome, Michaela. I'm so happy you're here. It's my pleasure, and thank you for this opportunity. Oh, yes, you're welcome. So just in getting started, Michaela, please tell me, do you experience getting older? And if so, what is that experience? And if not, why do you think it is that you don't? Well, if you think that um, I've been taking 51 years to grow older and to become uh, the woman I always wanted to become, well, uh, I think it's a privilege. So I, I wouldn't see it like, uh, you know, getting older, but I like the idea of growing older because, uh, you know, I don't see getting older as, uh, you know, uh, a decline. I see it like an, an opportunity. And um, if, yes, maybe, you know, I have uh, less energy uh, than uh, when I was uh, 20s or 30s, but um, I have, um, let's say, um, such an intellectual spark, much, much more, you know, confident, and um, a lot of ideas keep coming uh, out. And so, actually, I, I feel it like I'm booming, I'm uh, flourishing, I'm flourishing now, and uh, I'm so, I'm so happy. Plus, uh, you, you should remember that a great actress, uh, an Italian actress uh, from the past, uh, she used to say uh, to the photographers, please don't retouch my wrinkles because it took me 50 years to get them. So, I mean, what can I say? I mean, I, it's a really, really a, a great time. No, I don't feel uh, getting old in if you think of getting old in the that cliche, in that uh, typical way of thinking, uh, old age, uh, probably yes, I'm less energetic, but from a, a physical point of view. You know that I have talked to probably 
you have two at this point, a couple hundred women. And I've asked women that question. And I'll bet you 98% of them say something like you've just said that, yeah, I have less energy when, you know, when I get out of bed, my knees hurt a little more than they used to. But other than that, I feel better than I've ever felt. I feel more me. I feel more looking forward to what's next. And so I find that fascinating that our society has not caught up with how we really are. And I love your distinction. And I'm going to use it from now on between getting older and growing older. Mm, yeah, That's a beautiful distinction. Yeah, it's something that came up to my mind because, you know, as an Italian studying in English, writing in English, expressing myself in English, probably I pay more attention on uh, on words. Um, and so, I, I yes, I, I saw these differences in between uh, growing older and getting older. So I thought, wow, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I do too. Thank you. I love just the name, Crunchy Tales and Crunchy Talks. Tell us what they are and how they came into being. <laughs> so uh, crunchytaste.com is my online magazine, a magazine that I founded uh, a couple of years ago. And now slowly but surely is uh, taking off very well. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, because, uh, you know, uh, the beginning, uh, I couldn't figure it out why, you know, such a lovely project uh, took so long, you know, to, to become, uh, to grow. And, and now, when you least expect it, wow, now, you know, we, we are more, actually, yesterday, I checked, now we have more than 35 views um, per month. Uh, so, I mean, that's amazing. And if you think that we are really small, we are a small niche, I mean, and uh, such a small uh, team, it's with very small investment. It's incredible. And the, the name, the funny name, <laughs> means different thing. Um, well, as you know, usually women in their 50s or 60s are always, uh, you know, in a crunch. I mean, because, uh, you know, they are in between, you know, they are, uh, you know, they're all the parents, maybe to look after their kids. Uh, they're still, you know, uh, busy with their jobs. So, yeah, they literally feel like being every day in a crunch. But also uh, crunchy means uh, crispy. Uh, so, I mean, I thought, uh, well, uh, women uh, over over 40, over 50, over 60s, you know, are crunchy, not frumpy, you know, are, are women that, uh, you know, makes a noise, they speak up, they know what they want. And also crunchy conversations, sometimes are those ones that might be a bit embarrassing, you know, some uh, like, for instance, talking about menopause or talking about other things, you know, or, uh, you know, sex after 60s, you know, all these things that, oh my God, oh my God. So yes, I wanted a snappy name uh, and uh, something different, you know, so I said, yeah, crunchy, crunchy taste. Stories for late bloomers. Not even, you know, news magazine for over 40, over 50. For late bloomers, for all those women that feel to bloom after a certain age. And the crunchy talk basically, you know, um, stem from uh, this magazine because I wanted to, to make sure that the message, uh, you know, I wanted to find a way to reinforce the message. So thanks to this uh, talk uh, in which I invite uh, women from different uh, backgrounds, uh, we talk about uh, this uh, stage of life, but always, uh, you know, in a positive way. So, I mean, we don't sell any serum, any, you know, uh, life uh, lessons. We don't coach you. We don't uh, tell you how you should live your life. We simply, you know, uh, share our experience and uh, we want to inspire others. People come to see this, to attend this conversation, you know, to maybe, who knows, to go back home and say, yes, I can do it too. That's the whole idea. 
The first time I heard you talk about this, you I the first thing I remember you saying was, we're not frumpy, we're crunchy. And I thought, yes. You know, to me, crunchy means um, lots of things. But uh, but I think of fresh because yeah. things that are fresh are crunchy. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that is, that's great. Well, actually, some, some women also say, but you're not the biscuits. You said, well, <laughs> I would love to be a cookie. I would love to be, you know, someone, uh, someone's cookie, you know, to dip into the milk uh, in the morning. Why not? <laughs> so I sort of like, I like to think of being a biscuit, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so in your in a recent newsletter, you say that becoming aware of daily ageism is mm. important. So what is daily ageism and why is it the awareness of it so important yes because sometimes uh, we are the ones who most of the time are ageist and uh, sometimes we don't uh, even realize it you know uh, even uh, women in their 60s can probably say funny things about uh, women people in general in their 80s or, you know, and uh, we don't see that the thing that uh, I'm aging, you are aging, we are all aging. So why we are all ages, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's something that it's engraved since uh, uh, since we are very young, you know, all these uh, little funny jokes. Oh, that old lady, you know, frail that, uh, you know, walk on the street with a stick. Well, actually, I would like to have a stick to use it when someone, you know, don't uh, don't uh, make, you know, don't make my way, you know, don't help me to make my way. Or uh, I would like to be a funny lady, maybe being funny with younger guys. Why not? So if you like that kind of stereotype, that's OK. But I don't like the fact that, you know, you associate aging with something like, I don't know, like a decline. It's not like that. I mean, from a physical point of view, okay, but, you know, um, daily ages me because it's always like that. Like, you know, you expect that because I'm 60 uh, or even 40, you know, I need some help. For instance, uh, in the workplace, especially in Italy, if you are over 40, you're done. You can't uh, expect uh, to to climb the ladder. You're old and, uh, you know, they don't offer you any, any good... Um, good uh, contract maybe because they have to pay you more but most of the time uh, because uh, i don't know probably don't like the fact that you are too experienced <laughs> and um so it can start uh, yeah even at uh, at the age of 40 so and daily ageism uh, you know the fact that you expect that every every woman in her uh, 60s might need a help in carrying the bags uh, for the for the shopping or something you know all these uh, silly things or uh, the birthday card you know with all those funny jokes for instance online i don't know if you notice that sarah but there are all these uh how do you call it memes memes i don't know the yeah yeah yeah, yeah about uh you know the fact that oh i need to pee more often or you know i can't stand uh, you know all these funny stupid jokes that you know don't really i mean um uh i, I think don't really help you know that yeah you might laugh but that, that's that's not nice and not even uh, elegant let's say that I, yes, I absolutely agree with you, Michaela, that um, one of the things I, I often hear people say, you know, my age or younger, oops, senior moment. Well, yeah. you know, uh, people in their 20s forget things. Absolutely. And so to chalk everything like that up to age is a real denigration of oneself. We um, at Prime Spark, we're just getting ready to launch a line of Prime Spark greeting cards that um, are positive for older women. So rather than making fun of us, we are celebrating it. And I, I, and I know the day I remember so well going through the, the greeting card aisle in the drugstore and thinking, this is terrible. You know, we don't have cards like this. Racism. Yeah. 
We don't have cards very often like we used to for sexism even. Mm. Um, but ageism seems to like just be an open target. And um, so, yeah, good for you for highlighting just the daily <laughs> ageism because we are, we are some of our worst enemies with that. Yes, absolutely. Or sometimes when we think we are too old to, you know, to embark in a new challenging challenge. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, um, it, it has to stop. It, it's not easy. We we should change the conversation. Um, we should help even young kids to think about, uh, you know, uh, getting old like an opportunity and something nice. This was um, this was a very recent challenge to me that I did not do anything about, and I may go back and do something. But um, in the town where I live, there is a, a, a store that sells beauty products, and they have a big sign outside, anti-aging products. Mm -hmm. Now, to be anti-aging, I heard somebody once say, to be anti-aging is like being anti-breathing. <laughs> You know, you can't you, you can't be anti-aging. You can you can have healthy aging. You can have um, uh, glowing aging for for cosmetics. But mm. anti-aging doesn't make any sense. I mean, we're as you say, we're all aging. To be anti-aging is mean to be means to be pro-death because that's the only alternative. Yeah. Well, but you know, I mean, of course, marketing is, is uh, you know, tries to play with the words in order to keep selling products. You right. know, I think it, actually it's important to look after ourselves. So, I mean, it's important, you know, to use a cream that, you know, make our life, our face maybe less dehydrated or, you know, to keep fit because, uh, because uh, of our health. But maybe, you know, in my 20s, probably, I wanted to keep fit in order to to wear that uh, wonderful bodycon, you know, and being sexy. But now I want to keep fit because I want to be healthy. Right. So, I mean, uh, priorities change and that, that that's okay. Yeah, no, I I think uh, taking care of our bodies um, is, a, is necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's just how we think of it. Yeah. Are we trying to stay 30 or are we trying to stay healthy? Um, because it's a very different mindset. And if I'm trying to stay 30, I will be miserable. If yes. I'm trying if I'm trying to be healthy, that I can really give some attention to. But, you know, I really don't want to do, to be in my 30s. Um, oh, no. In my 30s, I wasn't so fulfilled. I wasn't even happy. Now I'm, I'm very, very, I mean... Happy, yes. I have to say, I, I, I'm quite happy and uh, fulfilled with my life. And uh, plus, you know, talking about the wrinkles and other things. Uh, I mean, everyone is different. For instance, uh, in my twenties, I suffer a lot because of acne. So, I mean, that was uh, really devastating. So now, in my fifties, if I have a, a wrinkle, I really don't care. I mean, it's nothing <laughs> compared to acne. So, you know, I mean, we, we need to see things from a certain perspective, you know? And so you might yeah. lose something, but you can achieve other things. And people say, oh, but, you know, your, your, your skin is quite good. You don't have so many wrinkles. Do you use something uh, of Botox or something? Said, no, actually, this is the result of acne, you know, because if you have an oily skin when you are very young, then you probably, you know, your skin, well, will be better <laughs> later on. So. so you've worked in different countries, and I'm curious about whether you've seen any differences between countries in terms of ageism, and particularly gendered ageism, so in terms of, of women. Are, do you see differences between, like, Italy and the UK or the oh, absolutely. US? What do you see? Well, I, uh, first of all, I have to say that in the UK, there are so many policies and, uh, you know, uh, what, what it's called diversity and inclusion is not just a, a buzzword. It's something taken very seriously. So, I mean, uh, I have to say that, for instance, in Italy, you don't really have this kind of um, uh, 
protections or even rights. But um, I don't know if uh, it's because uh, we still need uh, to, you know, to be more uh, uh, progressive or more open minded, or it's because uh, sometimes we we don't really live, uh, uh, we don't really experience growing older uh, like something uh, to dread. You understand what I mean? It's not uh, a big problem. I have to say that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, older women who are uh, fabulous and they have a very active life. So, you know, I, I don't know if it's because of that or because, yes, we still need to work on uh, our policies and uh, or, or on our social issues. Uh, in the USA, I have to say that, uh, you know, I, I can find, uh, you know, um, something similar to the UK. I mean, you should you should come to Italy <laughs> and you will see that there are still, but I don't know, probably because in our culture, actually um, what we call older people are um, uh, people who we really love, uh, people we, we really uh, spend time with, um, we we love sharing uh, our time with listening to the, the stories. Um, we probably I don't know. We have more a sense of community, so different generation uh, live uh, together in harmony. Probably that is fascinating. So the attitude toward being older is different in Italy, for example, mm. than say the United States. Mm. Um, which may account for a difference in um, ageism and how it plays itself out in the culture. That's a fascinating thing to think about, Michaela. Mm -hmm. I uh, so if that that would be fun to see about. Um, so Italy is one culture like that. Uh, I don't know if it still is, but certainly, for example, Japan has been thought of as a culture that really valued age and older, you know, older people. So it would be interesting to know to what extent ageism is off, you know, age, does ageism operate in the same way in countries that actually value their older people as compared mm -hmm. with in, in countries where they don't? Because in the United States, we definitely don't value older people. And so ageism is a big deal because it is um, a bear, it's a negative to be older. But I think it, it's a matter also of, you know, it depends on uh, the way you live, uh, you know, this stage of life, you know, because, um, okay, even when we talk about successful aging, there are different uh, meanings, you know, and sometimes people don't like the idea of successful aging because uh, um, we think that, oh, successful aging me means keep, uh, you know, looking good and young. No, my idea of successful aging is that, you know, to keep uh, being relevant, keep learning, keep growing. So that's my idea of successful aging. So um, it depends on uh, how you uh, experience this stage of life so i mean um, if unfortunately you don't uh, probably you don't you don't feel well or uh, you know you have some uh, health issues or uh, you know you you don't engage with your community with people everyone gets old even uh, i think that even uh, uh, a young guy or a young girl in their 20s might suddenly feel old because uh in the end, it's all about a lack of communication, a lack of interactions. So, I mean, everyone can get old in that uh, horrible meanings that society, you know, um, thinks. Um, because I met a lot of um, women in their 20s or 30s that they were old inside, I mean, uh, without any, you know, energy, any ideas, any goals. So if you want to, you know, to, to consider growing older in that way, well, you can get older anytime, even in your 30s or 20s, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know if I, if I express yeah, no, uh, No, that's, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think yeah. that... Um... 
and on the opposite side of it, sometimes when people have said, um, I don't I don't like to, to talk about getting older. I'd like to talk about getting wiser. And I've said, well, I know some older people that I don't think are very wise. And I know some young people who I think are very wise. And so the opposite is true, you know, that. Um, and how about the growing older and bolder? I like <laughs> yes, that. That's, I love that. Yeah. So what are of the things you've done? What are what's in your future? What are your dreams that you haven't done yet? What's next? Oh, well, you know what? Probably because I'm Italian, I'm very uh, laid back person. So I don't do these uh, uh, big plans for the future. But of course, you know, I have an idea of, of where I would like to, to go. I mean, at the moment, I'm very excited because in a few days I will uh, start my radio show. Hooray, hooray, uh, called The Beauty of Aging. Say and that again. I didn't understand what you just said. That sounds exciting. Yeah, I'm very excited because in a couple of days I will uh, start my new radio show uh, called The Beauty of Aging. So, oh, fantastic. I mean, I'm very excited about it, and uh, but in the future, well, I, I would like to take uh, these uh, crunchy talks in the USA. So I'll, I'll definitely work uh, towards these uh, these goals. And uh, who knows? Maybe sooner or later I will write a book. But it's not my my priority. My priority is to uh, keep meeting people, women of a certain age, and keep uh, you know um, flourishing together keep sharing, uh, you know, uh, our ideas, because I think that only in this way, we, re we really can reframe the idea of um, growing older. So let me say again, because I think it, I want people to know that you are starting a radio show called Aging Beautifully? <laughs> no, The Beauty of Aging. The Beauty of Aging. The In beauty. Italian, it's uh, Il Bello dell'Età. I love it. And is uh, is it online radio show or a uh, radio radio? Oh, it's a radio radio, but you can listen to uh, on Spotify and on via streaming. So if you want to practice your Italian, you can <laughs> listen uh, my you can listen to my show even from the USA. The beauty of aging. Oh, that's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. So when you leave this earth, and I hope it's no time soon, <laughs> what do you hope your legacy is? What do you hope you are remembered for? Well, uh, first of all, I would love to be remembered like uh, someone who... Uh, show to others that it's never too late to accomplish your goals. And um, it doesn't matter if you are not part of the inner circle. It doesn't matter uh, which background you come from. If you really want something, you can have it. And uh, if that means to change countries, meet new people, uh, leave your... Uh, your old life, old life behind, I mean, um, that's something worth it because the most important thing is uh, to find yourself and uh, finally bloom. That's the, the most important thing. And you know why I say that? Because coming from uh, a strict Catholic background, for part of my life, I thought that uh, strange but true. As a woman, my only goal uh, was to be, you know, a wife. And, uh, but I was a, a very different kind of girl, you know, I mean, I never thought of getting married, having a family. And so I didn't want to, to, you know, I thought, but there must be something more than just being a wife and having a little part-time job, you know, without, you know, any, and so I, of course, uh, you know, um, getting my master's degree at university opened my mind. And so... I started to see things from a different point of view. But um, so I'm a late bloomer myself. So what I'm trying to say that uh, it's important to keep uh, believing in your uh, dreams. If you feel that you have something that needs to be expressed, 
uh, I mean, you, you, you must do whatever it takes uh, to uh, make it bloom. And I'm not talking about uh, success. I'm not talking to become the number one. I mean, it could be everything. I mean, for instance, all of your life, you're dreamt of uh, riding a horse and you never get the opportunity to, to practice, um, I don't know, this kind of sport. It's never too late. I mean, um, so, um, yeah, I would like to be remembered like someone who shows that you can bloom even after 50. That would be your legacy. You can bloom after 50. I hope so. I hope people will remember like that. And I hope people will remember of me like someone, you know, who shows that uh, midlife and even growing older after, after 50 or 60 is it's, uh, a, a wonderful, colorful journey. And uh, it's not as depressive as many people think. It's wonderful. So I want to show that they are wrong. They are totally wrong. I just am finishing reading a book that some of your listeners might have fun reading. It's called The Retirement Rebel oh, by, nice, by, nice. by Siobhan Daniels. And it's about a woman who um, just sells everything. Her Her daughter is old enough now that she's living on her own, so she doesn't have to worry about children. She sells everything. She's just had it. She has to find herself. And she buys a motorhome and starts going all over the UK in her motorhome. And, you know, just because of the way life has turned out for all of us, not too far into her journey, COVID hits and everything yeah. is in lockdown. And it's a remarkable, it's a remarkable, yeah. she's on a, she, and she's still, I don't know if she's still doing it, but it's a remarkable journey that she describes. And I think it, it, I don't think that all of us have to sell everything we have and go get in a motor home and drive all over the country. But I think it's a great metaphor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank I agree. You. Yes, yes. Plus, it's also never too late to find love. Um, I, I met my husband when I was almost 40. I had my first and, long, and only child when I was 42. So, I mean... There, there, there are always possi possibilities in life. Right. Well, this has been absolutely delightful, Michaela. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Yeah. Well, they can uh, visit uh, our website, www.crunchytaste.com, and they can find there all the information that they, they need. They can visit our uh, um, Facebook page, Crunchy Tales. And, and if they want, they can drop us an email, info at crunchytales.com. Great. Thank you. So that's our time today. Please join us again. You can find our Prime Spark podcast on every major outlet. Find out more about Prime Spark at www dot primesparkwomen.com. Thank you so much to my wonderful guest, Michaela Di Carlo. My pleasure. And don't forget, you can find her lots of different places, but the main website is www.crunchytales.com. Remember, women, you are crunchy, not frumpy. Thank oh, you yeah. for being with us. Take care, <laughs> spread tolerance and love. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on Prime Spark. With each episode, Sarah Hart brings you conversations that inspire, celebrate, and empower women over 55. If you would like to listen to or download other episodes about remarkable, experienced women, go to EWNpodcastnetwork.com. This podcast is also available at Spotify, Apple Podcast, and most other major podcast sites. The second women's revolution is here, and we hope that you use the insights you've gained here to fuel the spark that will ignite your way forward, illuminate your path, and reflect your gifts in the world.
Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why is it so hard to make a buck? <laughs> I know I have. Hi, I'm Sandra Yancey, founder and CEO of eWomen Network. What I have discovered after going from the brink of bankruptcy to running a multi-million dollar award-winning business is this. You can't build a million dollar dream hanging around minimum wage mindsets. My mission is one million women entrepreneurs generating one million dollars in annual revenue. So here's what I've done. I've created the mother of all entrepreneur success programs that you can access online on your time. It's called Monetize Me Now. It's a seven module online course that is 100% my success formula, covering mindset, mission, management, motivation, marketing, and measure. Come on, take my hand and I'll show you the way to learn to earn flowing revenue for your business. Visit monetizemenow.com for details. Calling all speakers. E-Women Network has speaking engagements all over North America that must be filled. Are you a gifted messenger, author, expert, or successful entrepreneur that can help women entrepreneurs grow their businesses? Our mission is to help 1 million fulfilled women each achieve $1 million in annual revenue. If you're a speaker that can help women prosper, go to eWomenNetwork.com and sign up as a pro member of our Speakers Network. That's eWomenNetwork.com. Thanks for listening. This is the EWN Podcast Network.